All right, let's uh, drill it down then to the individual stocks. So far, the action is on uh, is limited to stocks where the numbers came out yesterday. So DCB Bank is under pressure as we had highlighted the highest quarterly slippages ever for the bank. The stock is down 12.5%. So far, at least, there is absolutely no recovery in the stock. Abhishek, the details? Well, the details are that, you know, Rima loan growth has come in at 13% versus our expectation of 17%. The slippages have come in at 145 crore. Now, analysts were working with a number of 100 to 110 crore. So, this is on the higher side. Uh, the net interest margin has declined due to the pressure on yield on advances, given the fact that loan growth is on the lower side and slippages are on the higher side. So, net interest margin came in at 3.67%. Uh, the core fee income uh, growth also remained weak, you know, while the balance sheet grew uh, 13%. The fee income actually contracted by 9% uh, YOY and about 16% uh, sequentially. So, there was a weak top line growth there, which led to operating profit declining by 10% sequentially and there was an increase in provision due to, uh, you know, deterioration in asset quality which caused the PAT to decline by 15% on a sequential basis. The stock had run up ahead of its results and results were disappointing on all fronts. Back to you. Okay, all right, Abhishek. Uh, thanks so much for that. So that stock's under some pressure. But MCX was the other one that came out with its set of numbers. It appeared the street was working with weak numbers. That wasn't to be the shots getting squeezed out. Stock moving to the high point of the day. Mangalam joins us to run us through those numbers. Mangalam. Absolutely. So the, it was a steady set that MCX reported. You know, if you take a look at the operational volumes or average daily volumes, they grew by about 13% year on year. And the operational revenue also grew by about 9% year on year. Not much in ter ter terms of uh, change coming in for uh, the profit before tax quarter on quarter, so no problems as far as the reported numbers are concerned. Of course, the bottom line was uh, affected by an exceptional in the previous quarter. They've maintained their market share at around that 90%, 93% plus in uh, the commodities arena. And the fact that last qu uh, quarter we saw gold prices move a little higher also ensured that uh, the share of gold in their overall commodities prices or um, overall commodities action increased. Having said that, the stock yesterday was at one point was higher by about 4% and from there uh, fell to the low point of the day. So a fair amount of shorts were built up in trade yesterday ahead of the numbers. So no bad news in the numbers and the shorts, like you said, are uh, uh, have gone in for a bit of a squeeze and the stock is at the high point. Thanks, uh, Manglam, for that. Let's talk about Strides Pharma and the warning letter which it received for the US FDA. Uh, Ikta, um, it's pointing to data integrity issues. How worried should the street be? Hi, thanks for that. Well, we all knew that the Puducherry facility had received a warning letter just a couple of days ago. The company did make a disclosure about it. Plus, uh, the fact that they had already received an official action indicated status a couple of months back. So we knew that this facility was under pressure uh, of some form when it came to compliance. But the regulatory issues which are in fact brought up within this warning letter are what is concerning. It in fact clearly points to data integrity issues. For example, it points to uncontrolled destruction of uh, compliance records as well as lack of uh, adequate document practices. Uh, there is an instance which is mentioned where the investigator observed discarded compliance documents and evidence of uncontrolled shredding of documents, etc. So this clearly points to a lot of data integrity issues. Remember that most of the Indian pharma companies had put behind these kind of data integri integrity issues around two years ago. So it seemed as though, as though we were over the hump. Generally, data integrity issues are much tougher to solve than other issues, and hence there is pressure on strides today. Not to mention that uh, uh, the particular facility has around 10 future uh, drug formulations filed from this particular plant, so they are going to get impacted in terms of approval until this particular plant is remediated. They are also currently manu manufacturing six uh, formulations from this particular facility, so the street is worried that there will be remediation costs plus maybe slower manufacturing on account of the remediation undertaken by the company. Okay, all right, Ekta, thanks so much for that. Well, Sadbhav Infra's first quarter toll revenues were up a mere 2.5%, while their biggest, biggest asset, that's Maharashtra border check post, traffic declined 5%. Earlier today, we spoke to Mr. Nitin Patel, the director of the company, and he says the slowdown in the car and the CV sales have impacted the overall toll revenue. Let's hear him out.
largely we have seen the decline in the car sales as well as the commercial vehicle sales basically that seems to be a impact in the revenue of the maharashtra border check post because in this particular spv the revenue is coming from only the commercial vehicle so the loaded vehicle which passes who enters the state or exit from the state those are paying the revenue to us actually if we take out the impact of maharashtra border check post and more particularly rohtak panipat uh, uh, that is because project specific because in rohtak panipat uh, because alternate route has been constructed by the state authority so that is the impact if we take out that project specific issue then rest if we see that the actual traffic growth in the rest of the assets and the revenue growth it is almost in a double digit we are in a very advanced stage of getting the nha approval for six of the spvs and uh, we expect that the before 15th of august we will get the all the approval from nha in place so that will be the first lot to go uh, into the trust and uh, followed by the aurangabad jalna amdabad ring road and mysore belari so these three are the state concessions and we have entered the separate set purchase agreement for the all of these spvs so as and when we get the client approval we can move these asset into the trust so the funds can flow continuously but on overall basis we are expecting that the before mid of the october we will be able to get the entire money uh, within the system we have given the clarification also into the exchanges and that has already been sorted out and now we are in the process of getting the revised rating from the rating agency Okay, let's uh, do a quick recap then of the top buzzing stocks: DCB Bank, MCX, Strides Pharma, and finally Sadhav Infra. But as we said, I think the key focus will be on the big numbers today, and the two from the Nifty Pack are Yes Bank as well as Wipro. Let's start with Yes Bank because that's where all the investor interest is. Uh, Abhishek, there was a great run-up in the stock in the last few days, uh, but it's come off a bit uh, today. It's down about three odd percent. What's the street expecting? well analysts are expecting slippages to be on the higher side and that is why you know deterioration in asset quality can happen now the key thing to watch will be the loan growth could moderate a bit towards 15 to 18 percent we are used to seeing loan growth of north of 30 percent plus and that could moderate so the net interest margin on account of elevated slippages expected by analysts and lower loan growth could actually uh, you know uh, be under pressure last quarter the net interest margin was at 3.1 percent uh, provisions can remain been elevated due to the fact that they have a stressed asset or watch list of about 10000 crore on which they have to make provisions now slippages as per philip capital they expect a slippage of 2100 crore and that is on the higher side so asset quality could deteriorate philip capital expects gross npa at 3.9 and that compares to about 3.2% in the previous quarter but all eyes will be on the capital raising plans of the bank because that will restore investors faith into the bank our poll just an a growth of 12% while net profit can decline by 88% however couple of analysts like you know kotak securities as well as idfc securities expect a net loss ranging between 560 to 580 crores back to you Okay, all right, Abhishek. We'll keep an eye out. You're going to be the man in focus for majority of uh, today. We'll uh, and that's one of the most and exciting numbers. And what time numbers. are the numbers, by the way, Abhishek? Post market. Typically comes out uh, you know in the afternoons, but now last quarter also it came post market. Okay. And then the conference call is at six o'clock. Yes. Imagine poor Abhishek, he's got a busy day, Riva. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So well, post poor me also. Poor you as well because you have a Wipro to track, right? Absolutely. And that's going to be post market as, but I don't think it's going to be that late. It typically comes out around four. I'm feeling 4:30. lucky today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But tomorrow you have ACC. Yeah, ACC is numbers post market. Post market as. So tomorrow we're going to have this conversation when I'm going to feel a little better than you. But okay, let's talk. about wipro then uh, we're expecting a muted quarter this time so uh, the dollar revenue is expected to come down by po- po- a point 4%. Now remember if I compare it to what peers have reported TCS had a growth of 1.6% in forces was 2.3%. So this minus 0.4% is very muted compared to peers. No growth expected in constant currency terms. If I adjust it for uh, the divestiture of Cornerstone as well as Workday I come with an organic constant currency growth of 0.4%. Again pretty muted, right? It will be within the company's guided band. Margins will be under pressure. We've seen about 100 basis points decline for all the other companies which have reported numbers so far. on account of a wage hike visa cost inr appreciation for wipro in particular it's a one month wage hike because their wage cycle starts in june i'm going to keep this simple uh, the key to track will be their q2 guidance which is seen between 1 and 3% so we are expecting growth to come back for the company in q2 and that's because the company itself had guided for that so what they said in the conference call is that you know q1 as you know is typically seasonal
days in the Lee week. Q1 guidance was impacted by the completion of certain large projects as well as delay in the start of fresh projects. And the company at that time had said that we're confident that growth trajectory will improve from Q2 on the back of the strong deal win. So the key to track will be uh, their Q2 guidance. Q1 muted, weak. Q2, there should be a pickup. If there isn't, then the street will be very disappointed. Okay, all right, Rima. Well, as we speak, in fact, the IT stocks have moved to the high point of the day. Infosys continues to move higher. You have a bit of a pop-up that we're seeing in TCS as well. So let's pull up the IT index. Now that's moved to the high point of the day. Infosys and TCS, majority of uh, the weightage comes in from both those two companies, and both of them have moved to the day stop. Well, on that note, we'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll get you an excerpt from a conversation with the Revenue Secretary, Ajay Bhushan Pandey, who backs the government's move of imposing FBI surcharge. Stay with us.